Oh, and welcome back. Thank you for joining us for our second segment. And we have with us today, as we commemorate and talk about World Refugee Day, we have with us on set uh, Ulysses, um, Janie, Alyssa, Amilcar, um, Umana, Umania, with us this morning. If you, if you note, um, we have in fact taken some precautions in relation to a few of our guests this morning, and it is because of their status. But we're hoping to have a very important conversation this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You want to start off? Go ahead. Now, being a refugee is, is a difficult um, situation. You um, came to Belize how many years ago? Uh, 1982, that would be 37 years. 37 years. Yeah. And could you give us an idea of your story? What, what was it like? Um, first, your situation, um, you're from El Salvador. That's right. What was the situation like in El Salvador, and what has been your story since you've been to Belize? Well, well at the time, it was uh, the civil war in El Salvador. Um, but what I think more important than, than the fact that we had to leave the country is how Belize has been able to provide for us and how we have been able to contribute to Belize. And I think that's the story that we want to, to really um, trumpet out there. Um, refugees have to flee their country for, for many reasons. But once they land in a new foreign country, then you know it's a matter of, of, of course, surviving at first, but then being able to contribute to the society in which you live. And that is really my story. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, part of what you're saying uh, rings a lot with me because um, there, was, there, were, there were a couple commercials, a couple um, commercials that you did. And one of the things that came to me in appreciating um, refugees and the challenges was really the fact that um, we have a lot to appreciate in Belize. Um, and, and, and so as you give that story as to what you went through, I think the story of what you came from and the difficulties that you had there is also important, as much as the significant contributions that you've made here. Mm -hmm. So could you go back to a little bit of what was happening? What was that civil war like yeah. in um, El Salvador? Um, well, civil war started in 1978. Uh, so I pretty much lived through four years of that, mm -hmm. um, and it lasted until 1993 when, when the peace truth was signed. Um, but but that's, that's the era when a lot of immigration happened yeah. due to that um, civil unrest. Um, we still see that happening nowadays, but it is because there's a different civil problem. Yeah. Um, the, the issue of of lack of jobs, um, gangs, and so forth in, in these co Central American countries. And we are talking um, three, pri three countries primarily, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Belize, uh, who are, which are plagued with these social problems. And that's what's causing people to, to still flee these countries, yeah. to seek a better refuge. And it's, it's a matter of survival. Um, your life gets threatened. Uh, you know, you either join them or, 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 or you suffer consequences. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, can I just say um, thank you all for coming and being brave enough to share your stories. I know there's a lot of misunderstanding sometimes about who refugees are in this country and why people uh, choose to, to flee to Belize. Um, and, and I want to bring the conversation over to Alyssa. Um, and Alyssa, Tell us a little bit about what happened that made uh, you and your family come to Belize. Well, um, I will share a little bit of, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. our, sto our story. And um, I came in 2014. I have 2014. Been, yeah, I have been living here with my family for. And I came with my my parents and my brother and my sister. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we were forced to to come to this country due to the gang groups in, in El Salvador, and we were threatened there. And uh, a family member was was killed, and so that's the reason we we came. And um, we don't have. That was not a decision that my parents make to um, 
to bring bring us here mm, there was no option for us to to come because our lives were in in danger so we we came he, here to seeking refugee mm -hmm. protection because mm -hmm. we thanks god we are here mm -hmm. alive and if if we have stayed there maybe any of of us um, would be dead there so and you said the gangs are a lot different in El Salvador and you can you can help me out as yes. well in yes. in Belize when we think of gangs we think of gangs versus gangs but it's very different in in some of the Central American countries um, sometimes they just target you because you live in a particular community or just anyone in, in general right yes yeah or if um, in, the, in the case of my uncle he was killed because he couldn't pay a, a, mo a high amount of money mm -hmm. so they they kill killed him yeah. they couldn't pay do you want to explain yeah, that um, that's very common that's the thing it, it's yeah. not it's not like, it, like if you really leave a situation like that yeah. i mean we do have gangs in belize but as you rightly said it's it's rivalry gang, gang yeah. against gang out there it's it's not the same. Um, they have what they call the, the war tax, mm -hmm. which they impose on businesses. Any little businesses that's popping up there, yeah. they approach them and ask them for a certain contribution every week. And mm -hmm. people that refuse or fail to, to or fulfill that it. or cannot pay it um, sometimes suffer the ultimate consequence. Um, teenagers, as soon as they are 12, 13 years old, the gangs come recruiting them, mm -hmm. and it's by force. Yeah. Uh, if you deny, if you don't want to give up your child, then there might be the ultimate consequence. Mm -hmm. you, you lost your dad. Yes. Ulysses? You lost your dad. How long ago did you move to Belize? Yeah. Three years. Three years. Yeah. How old are you? Twelve. Twelve. Do you remember when you left and came here? Tell us a bit about that time. Um, um, I was small when my father was selling vegetables in another place. Um, the guns kill kill him because they think that that he he gave information and put them to the other people. Mm. So, what happened when 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 your dad was killed? You came to Belize immediately after. Yes, we we came to Belize. Um, yeah. Is it is it something that still? You're still worried about it up to today, no? Yes. No, no. Maybe, may, maybe, maybe you can help us a little. Um, the process of coming to Belize, El Salvador isn't Guatemala. It's not right next to us. How difficult is it for persons who um, qualify to seek refugee status in Belize to actually get to the safe borders of Belize? I think that's always a challenge and the stories are very different from one uh, family to the other. Um, in cases like mine, we, we, we managed to get out of the country legally and actually flew to Belize, but yeah. that's not the story of everybody. Some people have to literally get out of their homes midnight and, and, and just try to make it out of the country because there's a threat for the next day. Yeah. So they might have to... Um, find their way through Guatemala, which, whichever means they can, and eventually hope to land in a place like Belize where they can seek the refugee status. Yeah, yeah during, during that, the 90s, there was an opening for, for refugees to flee here. While the gang warfare continues in Central America, there's just a risk that families take in, in coming here and hoping to get refugee status. That's, that's now, so. our youngest... Uh, guest this morning is Janie. Janie is nine years old and uh, Alyssa you'll help us with some of the the translations if you can because I know Janie says she doesn't speak that much English but Janie how long ago did you move here? How long did I stay here? I stayed here for six months. 
Six months. Seis meses. Uh, ¿Recuerdas por qué venir por aquí? Sí. ¿Por qué? Porque a mi abuela le llegaron los muñoz. Because um, guns reach to her grandmother's home. Guns what? Reach her grandmother's home. Reach her grandmother's home. Yeah, six months ago. You said that you like Belize because there's not a lot of violence here. It's, you know, you can relax here. Is that true? Es verdad que te gusta estar aquí porque no es peligroso y no hay violencia. Sí, me gusta estar acá. Sí, yes. ¿Qué es diferente de la vida en Belice? Porque aquí no hay mañoso. No hay violencia. Here no, no crime, no violence, uh -huh. no guns. And for you, Ulysses, what's, what's the biggest difference? Um, yes, we got the same thing, like, huh? Yeah. No guns, no violence. Yeah. More there, peace. Yeah. There are certain things say that... something? Yeah, you can imagine the, the, the trauma that this guy, these people come with. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly traumatic, uh, whether you come from... A, from a civil unrest like the civil war or from the uh, civil problem that, that the country is facing you now and, and what violence they have seen yeah. and the trauma they come with certainly um, it's something that needs to be looked into mm -hmm. once they arrive here. But um, it, it's, it's definitely a relief, certainly a relief to be in a, in a country where you don't have to be sleeping in the bushes at night because you know it's something that we had to go through mm -hmm. uh, just just to avoid um, any, any, any consequences yeah you know I, I i was away for a very long time and people kept on saying well why don't you stay here whether it was the states costa rica jamaica people are keep on kept on asking me why i didn't stay there but belize i love you know this is home there are certain things that even though you're in Belize and you're happy to be alive and to be safe, there must be certain things that you miss from home. Nothing can replace those things, whether they be friends or otherwise. I'm curious because some people might say, okay, you know, you came here and, you know, it's a better place completely. But there are things that you miss from home. For those of you who are old enough to remember what home is, what are those things? Because there, ha there has to be a human side yeah. I think if we appreciate people as humans, as common, um, just as the baby is, Jenny. Jenny is, has the right to feel safe and happy to be in this country, so we should be feel safe and happy to be in this world. Right. But my question is, I want to go back to just humanizing it. So what are some of the things that you miss about home? I, I would say that your immediate family members yeah. that you're leaving behind. Um, and and it's, it's, it goes along with time, how long you've been here. Because the shorter time you're here, you miss, you miss some of your friends, you miss your classmates, what, what have you. Yeah. But in situations like myself, um, except for the family members that are still there, yeah. there's nothing else to miss. I, I have not been back to the place I came from in El Salvador. Although I've been back to El Salvador. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, That's a powerful it, it goes away said, with time. Like, yeah. uh, you detach yourself eventually. Yeah. But um, yeah, the family members that are still there. In, and I think that that's, that's something that we don't consider so often. You know, when, when you're uprooted, uh, you know, Janie is nine, Ulysses is, is 13. Um, when you're uprooted out of the only life you know, for your absolute safety, you know, you, you lost your father, Ulysses, I, I know. Um, the gangs went in and, and, and really beat up uh, uh, Janie's grandmother and attempted, you know, wanted to threaten her family. Um, you leave everything behind just for the simple purpose of maintaining your life. And in the case of your parents, in maintaining their lives and the life of their children. That's a, a lot of adjustment. And Alyssa, I want to ask you because so you come and you have to go back to school. How much English did you know at that time? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. So and what has it been like to try to get back into school and have a normal life once again, and you didn't even talk the language? 
um, it has not been mm -hmm. easy. Uh, it has not been easy because I didn't know the language and I was a second year high school student in my country. Oh, okay. And when I came here, I start from, I did one year in standard five. Then I went, I didn't do it in uh, standard six. Then I start the high school, okay. standard um, um, from one. First one, yeah, first yeah, one, yeah. yeah. Then I did third and fourth, and I graduated. Wow. Congratulations, that's good. Yes. Yeah. But the, nothing was easy was really hard. Yeah. What do you Get miss the most about home? Or do you miss anything about home? Yes. I, I miss my family, my grandma. And my friends. And Since my school. Your school, yeah. <laughs> Since you've been here, um, and, I, and I know because you're at an age you can understand more. I mean, you, you understand why your family did this, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I understand that they, they came here to save our lives. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I want to ask, what do you think is an importance of us and Belize, because Belize is watching and listening, of hearing the stories of refugee challenges through these children and young people. What do you think is the importance? I think it's important to recognize that there's that problem out there and that a place like Belize can provide a safe heaven where people can actually come and, and feel that sense of safety. And in fact, not only a sense, but there is safety here yeah. if you compare it to what is going on in the Central American countries. So although there's no civil war anymore, but we have the social problems of the gangs that are maybe as bad as when we had civil war. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I would say to a certain extent, could be even worse. Yeah. Because during a civil war, certain elements were involved and certain elements were attacked. But not the whole community is at stake. Uh, innocent lives being threatened. Yeah. And so it's really heartbreaking to, to hear these stories. Um, we went through that, a similar case, but that was, as I told you earlier, yeah. so many, many years ago. So you kind of adjust to that. When it's, when it's very recent, then it's, it's certainly something that is, is really hard to cope with. Amilcar, your presence here, and I think um, your story, is such a great um, educator to people who really believe a lot of misconceptions about refugees. A lot of people in this country um, often feel, well, we don't have jobs, um, or, and we're a poor country. How are we going to accommodate more people? And that you'll, refugees will essentially only be a burden. Um, but you are an educator in this country. You come here, and now you have studied, and you're giving back. Tell me a bit about making that turn, and, and how refugees actually help as a part of the development. That's, that's, that's a very, very, very good question there. Um, <clears throat> I, think, I think refugees, for the most part, will at some point contribute to our society. Mm -hmm. um, you do have the few far in between in any society. Mm -hmm. Yes. But in, uh, as generally speaking, there will be some form of contribution. And when we came in the early 80s, our form, our form of living was farming. Mm -hmm. But that's a contribution because mm -hmm. if you are farming alone, you are contributing to the n nutrition of the country. Yeah. But uh, as you go through and you get into the educational system and you become a professional, uh, we have so many examples of people out there that, are ref that were refugees, that are descend direct descendants of refugees who are in the educational field like I have been, mm -hmm. who are in the police department, some higher, higher in the ranks, mm -hmm. who are now in medicine. Uh, I know some, some from Valley of Peace that are now doctors, um, who are also their own business owners, who are now employing Belizeans because they have started their own business. So 
there's, there's a lot that can be expected. So it, it shouldn't be seen just as a burden, mm -hmm. but that eventually there will be some form of contribution for the country yeah. on behalf of the refugees. Okay. Yeah. Did you know you wanted to be an educator when you were growing up, when you moved here? Uh, no, actually, I, I didn't know English. <laughs> I was going to say, you went from no English it was, to... It was a total shock when I arrived uh, at, the, at the airport here and everybody was speaking English. We had no clue what they were saying. And so we had to start at, at standard four, yeah. I remember. I had to do two years of standard six. English was a part of the problem. Yeah. I, I could imagine coming as a refugee by yourself. It's a completely different ch challenge to come with children. Because you come by yourself, you can probably catch um, uh, a room in a small place. You can just you know, hand to mouth for yourself. But when you have children who have needs, educational needs, they have their own need for space, you have to also keep them in a private, secure place to make sure that um, the problems don't necessarily follow them that brought them here. Could you talk to us about the dynamics between somebody who comes here by themselves as a refugee and somebody who brings children and their families? Well, certainly the responsibility is much, much less when you're here by yourself rather than coming with a family. It depends on, on obviously, the dynamics of the family whether you come with only children, with wife, and the amount of children. Uh, my dad moved here one year before we came. So he had to be here for one year, you know, trying to sort out things uh, 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 in, the, in the farming industry before we were actually able to come. And obviously, when we came then, he had to then provide uh, even more for, for all of us. But, but the families that are coming, and sometimes they don't have nowhere to land, they simply arrived, and there's not even a shelter. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a real problem for them. So I, I, I know of situations in, in Valley of Peace. That's the community I come from, mm -hmm. yeah. where um, you know, there's always kind-hearted people that will assist and provide a, a temporary refuge, at least, until they can get on their feet. But coming with children is certainly more risky and more demanding. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are so appreciative that you came in and shared your stories. And I do want to find out just one more thing about you. Um, what do you want to be in your future? Uh, I would like to become a teacher. You want to yeah. be a teacher? Yes. Yeah. That's my goal. So you're in fourth form. You're going to go to junior college after this? No. Um, I finished uh -huh. um, high school, but I can apply to UB because I I have, I don't have this so social security, security card. card, so that's a problem that Because you there. don't have your full refugee statuses yet. No. Yeah. That's so you, what, what I mean, you can't go to college no. because you have to get your status settled so you can get the social security yes. card. Well, I hope the right ear is here that they understand the challenges. Uh, Ipara Jenny? ¿Qué quieres ser en el futuro? Quiero ser. Doctora. Maestra. Ah. <laughs> Maestra. Maestra también. How about you, Ulysses? A painter. A painter. Ah. Wow. Well, we hope to see you all being successful in your future, and we're really grateful that you came to shed some light on the stories behind uh, the refugees who've moved here. And, and can I say this too, for those watching, it's not impossible for Belize to get there. Um, being a refugee, we, we have a society where a number of groups came in. Garifuna basically were running from... As immigrants. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Mennonites were here. A lot of the persons who are up north in Corozal were moving from the caste war. So it is not impossible and it's not hard mm -hmm. for us to be in this position and for children i could imagine my daughters i have two having <laughs> and so I think that god surely has a place in all of this to say please we blessed you with certain things and we hope that you exercise that responsibility so I, again i want to thank you guys for coming in yeah i know that belizean heart which um you are belizean yeah. uh, um yeah. that our heart is big enough to take on all that we need to do yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about summer camps to the Department of Youth Services, so stay tuned.